Neanderthals have long captured the imagination of filmmakers and storytellers, with movies like Clan of the Cave Bear, based on John M. Orwell's novel. It painted these early humans as primal, brutish beings living in a harsh, unforgiving world. For decades, Neanderthals were widely portrayed as unintelligent and primitive. However, groundbreaking research, including the decoding of the Neanderthal genome, has flipped this narrative. Today, we know they were much more like us than previously thought, crafting tools, expressing emotions, and even interbreeding with modern humans. In this video, we explore how researchers used ecological models to map where Neanderthals and modern humans lived 120 to 80,000 years ago and find where they might have met and interbred. This groundbreaking discovery revealed biocultural admixture among Neanderthals, archaic and modern humans, and Denisovans during the late Pleistocene. This has led to a growing body of research exploring the nature and evolutionary history of these events. Despite significant impacts on species, the timing and geography of these biological exchanges remain subjects of intense debate. Neanderthals are an extinct lineage of hominins that emerged around 400,000 years ago and went extinct approximately 40,000 years ago. Fossil evidence and Neanderthal morphology suggest they were adapted to the Palearctic biogeographical realm stretching from Western Europe to the Altai Mountains in Siberia at 55 degree latitude and extending down to around 31 degree in Western Asia. Chronological settlement patterns of Neanderthal sites show their expansion to Eastern and Southwestern Asia by at least 150,000 years ago. There is strong evidence of multiple interbreeding events between Neanderthals and archaic humans in Western Eurasia. Numerous attempts have been made to estimate the timing of this interbreeding, with significant progress achieved. Paleogenetic studies suggest that the second wave of interbreeding happened during a warm phase in Earth's history, about 130,000 to 80,000 years ago, known as Marine Isotope Stage 5. Some researchers have proposed that the lower latitude regions of southwestern Asia may have been the first area where Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans overlapped. Scientists examined the expansion patterns of both Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans, showing that they shared the same ecological niches under certain climatic conditions during the late Pleistocene. Recently, researchers reported facial morphological similarities between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans in the Near East suggesting this region could have been a key area for interbreeding between the two lineages. However, the exact location where the two species met and interbred remains unclear. Ecological niche models are highly useful tools for studying the geographic distribution of two species in the past and identifying potential interbreeding areas. These models have important applications in paleobiogeography, archaeology, and paleoanthropology. They use occurrence data for a target species, such as ancient humans, along with paleoenvironmental variables to estimate the likelihood of a species or hominin's presence in a specific geographic area. These models have been successfully applied to reconstruct the distribution of different hominin species, identify habitat during ice ages, reconstruct dispersal routes, and analyze niche overlap among species, including their prey. For example, some researchers use these models to identify contact zones between Neanderthals and Denisovans, while others applied ecological niche models to determine the distribution of Neanderthals during the last interglacial period in Europe and the irano turonian region. Scientists also aim to determine the most important environmental predictor for each species and explore how they responded to different environmental variables. Southwest Asia aligns with the distribution patterns of both species. Therefore, they hypothesize that Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans first encountered and interbred 
at the boundary of these biogeographic realms, where diverse environmental conditions may have facilitated niche overlap and resource sharing. Since climate is a key factor in determining species distributions, particularly on large scales, scientists expect it to have played a larger role than topography in influencing interactions between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans. They estimated the relative contributions of environmental factors for Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans. For Neanderthals, the most important predictors were the maximum temperature of the warmest month, the minimum temperature of the coldest month, and annual precipitation. Neanderthals were less likely to be found in areas with higher maximum temperatures. For anatomically modern humans, slope, topographic diversity, and precipitation during the warmest quarter were the key factors. Both species showed similar responses, with less habitat suitability in steep areas. Hominin interbreeding is a key topic in paleoanthropology, but the exact timing and locations of these events remain largely unknown. Among the various hominin species, the interbreeding between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans is particularly significant as it has shaped the genetics of modern humans. In this study, scientists used information systems to reveal that the Zagros Mountains in Persia are a highly suitable area for niche overlap and a potential interbreeding zone for these two species. This finding is supported by various studies involving genetic data, ecological modeling, archaeological and fossil records. Neanderthals likely expanded into the Zagros region following the Palearctic environment and karstic terrains from the Black Sea area through the Caucasus and Anatolia into southern regions. Recent evidence shows that the southernmost reach of Neanderthals extended to around 31 degree latitude in a region that stretched southward along the anti-Lebanon and Zagros mountains. Neanderthals found further east in places like present-day Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and parts of Asian Russia are known as Central and North Asian Neanderthals. Evidence of Neanderthals has been consistently found in humid mountainous areas of southwestern Asia, including Anatolia, the Caucasus, and the Zagros Mountains. The Middle Paleolithic period in the Zagros Mountains is well documented, thanks to the discovery of stratified archaeological sites with absolute dates, hominin fossils, and lithic artifacts. Among numerous Middle Paleolithic sites, four have yielded Neanderthal fossils. The most famous of these is Shanidar Cave, where the remains of 10 Neanderthals were found. About 350 kilometers southeast, in the Kerman Shah region, the Vesmer and Bisatun Caves also produced Neanderthal remains. The recent discovery of a Neanderthal tooth at the Bawa Yawan rock shelter in association with Mousterian tools is especially notable. The tooth dates to around 65,000 years ago, while the Mousterian layer is about 83,000 years old. In Southwest Asia, there is substantial evidence of anatomically modern human presence during the late Pleistocene. Anatomically, modern humans inhabited the Levant in two periods, between 177,000 and 194,000 years ago, as shown at the Mislia site, and between approximately 120,000 and 90,000 years ago, at Skul and Kafse. Homo sapiens permanently settled in the area around 55,000 years ago. Extensive data on hominin occupations in Arabia from 400,000 to 50,000 years ago, including the discovery of an anatomically modern human finger bone at al wusta dating to around 85,000 years ago, suggests that Arabia served as a gateway to Eurasia during the middle to late Pleistocene. There is also evidence of non-Mysterian, Middle Paleolithic artifacts dating back to 80,000 years in the southern and central parts of the Persian Plateau, including the Zagros region. This geographic intersection 
combined with Pleistocene climatic shifts, likely led to repeated visits by people from both realms, increasing the chances of interaction between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans. The Zagros Mountains span a vast region of over 1,500 kilometers, capable of supporting large, stable human populations. Also, the mountains are highly diverse in terms of topography and biodiversity. The Zagros Range has also facilitated the niche overlap of other species with similar habitats and has played an important role in species distribution, acting either as a barrier or a corridor for dispersal. Scientists also propose a plausible migration route into the central plateau from the southern regions via Arabia, the Persian Gulf, and the Oman Sea, potentially following coastal lines and moving inland. Recent evidence of hominin occupations in the southernmost part of the Persian plateau further supports this hypothesis. The initial hypothesis was that climatic factors would be the dominant force in predicting the distributions of both Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans. However, findings revealed a more complex picture. While climate was indeed the key factor for Neanderthal habitats, the distribution of anatomically modern humans was more significantly influenced by topographical variations. The climate across their distribution areas was relatively uniform, but the topography varied greatly. This suggests that topography played a larger role in shaping the distribution of anatomically modern humans. This study adds to the growing evidence that species distributions are shaped by a complex interaction of environmental factors. The results are consistent with previous studies showing that annual precipitation and the maximum temperature of the warmest month were the most important predictors of Neanderthal distribution on the Persian plateau. While climate was the main factor for Neanderthal distribution in Europe and the Persian region during the last interglacial period, the influence of topography was more localized. One important use of ecological niche models is to identify suitable areas for the presence of species where they haven't been observed before. Field surveys guided by these models have led to the discovery of new populations and rare species, proving their value. The model, which predicts potential interbreeding zones between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans, is highly promising for guiding future fieldwork and excavations. Before this study, our understanding of the interbreeding between anatomically modern humans and Neanderthals was primarily based on genetic and morphological data. This research has pinpointed the Persian Plateau, particularly the Zagros Mountains, as a likely interbreeding area. These border regions are important in biology because they serve as habitat for species from glacial environments. Scientists anticipate that many exciting future discoveries in the region will provide further insights into human evolution and migration patterns. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.